gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Rat Catcher. This is a solo-only board game designed by Matthew Aslan and published by Platypus Games. Alright, so here's a starting setup of The Rat Catcher. The essence of this game is that you are in the kingdom of Brie. They started to make this really amazing magical cheese, and it's, it's having amazing effects on the humans, and it's delicious, but it's also attracting rats. And then the magical properties of the cheese cause the rats to become more terrifying and desperate for cheese also. So in the game, you win by either defeating your boss for the game. So in this case, I have the Rat King, but this actually flips over to reveal the brood mother. You also have the maw and the abyssal rat. So you have a couple of different nemesis rats to go up against. And they do each have a nice wooden meeple. I'm just laying it flat so you can see it on the camera. So to win, you can either defeat the rat or you can get 10 pieces of magical cheese. Similarly for the rat, they need to either get 10 pieces of the magical cheese or kill you, which is a lot easier than you would probably like for it to be. The magical cheese also does something else that's really important in the game, and that is it allows both you and the enemy to level up. So if I got a piece of cheese because I moved there and there were no rats there and I could collect it, then I would actually put the cheese in one of these upgrade slots and it would get me something like more traps or more health or better movement. And there are actually specialized upgrades on each of the heroes. So this is Guildmaster Horus. He's got his own special abilities that you can unlock. But there are several other rat catchers that you can play, including the Pied Piper, a classic. Miss Black. Madam Cage, who is an engineer and kind of terrifying. Professor Fume. He's into the chemical weapons. Sister Constantine, a murderous nun, at least if you're a rat. And then, of course, again, Guildmaster Horus. So every single one of your potential rat catchers is going to feel a little bit different to play. You're going to have different starting stats and also some different numbers of traps and things that you can begin with. Let's give Guildmaster Horus his health. He'll need it. So there's one part of setup I haven't done yet, just because I want to show you how it works. But basically, whenever you put out one of these township cards and it's fresh, you put cheese on the cheese spot. Uh, this has a heart, so I'd put a health token there. Um, these spots with rats are what I'm about to show you. That's where you put rats initially. And then you have these spots that have little mystery tokens, but I've already checked in the bottom of them and put the appropriate tokens out. So these can spawn potions and things that you need. So for your purple and yellow abilities, or they can spawn what are called peculiar rats, which are some of the more unpleasant mutated rats that are like sub bosses in the game. So you don't want them to show up, but you also kind of do because they're fun and, and difficult. To populate the board with rats, what you're going to do is you're going to draw rats from this bag. And a lot of the game's mechanisms are based on this. So you'll draw, and when you initially are setting up a card, you put a rat on every space. On future turns, if the card is still active, you only put rats on these bigger spots with the spawn circle on them. All right, so we've drawn a black rat. Black rats are special because they cause you to draw an extra rat. So if you draw a black rat and then you draw a second one, then you draw yet another rat. And they also become spawn points on future turns. So those are sort of terrible, but it is what it is. And you're gonna have to figure out how to deal with it. It's like a way of randomly adding extra rats to the board. All right, so the, now, the, now that all these rats are out, that's exactly how you would populate your starting setup. And all these rats are gonna move around according to their priorities. So each of the rats moves a little bit differently. White rats and black rats are focused on getting cheese. So they are going to swarm any of the cheese that is available on the board and try to get it before you do. The brown rats, on the other hand, are focused on you and they're gonna move in your direction. So they're gonna come and try to bite you. And as you might've noticed, you don't have a whole lot of health, so you don't wanna get bit too much. The other thing I was starting to note earlier is that as the rats get cheese, they also cause level ups on the boss. So the first cheese they get doesn't do anything, but by the second one, the white rats start to speed up. There's a mutation ability that appears partway up. Then the ultimate bad guy will ultimately spawn. Basically things just get worse and worse and worse the more cheese they get. And if they get to 10 before they kill you, 
or before you can kill them or get 10 cheese, then they'll win. So the more cheese you allow the rest to get, the worse things get for you and the more challenging, especially because they're leveling up with the cheese that you could have been using to level up. Turn structure is very simple. Basically you, the rat catcher, can move a certain number of spaces. You're gonna to wanna to spend your movement on a combination of actually moving around and on traps because you need to spend movement to lay traps. And rat traps are key to kind of keeping you alive, especially if your die rolls don't go well. So for every turn, you get a certain number of dice to use as well, which will go in these slots. And your dice are also something you're gonna to have to decide how to use. Uh, usually you're gonna use a lot of them to attack, but in what numbers and when and how is up to you. But essentially you're gonna be moving around, attempting to clear rats out of a space. So let's say there's three rats. I wanna to try to roll four dice because this one needs an extra hit. And then these five and up dice would be hits. So I could either use both of these to get rid of a black rat, or I could get rid of both of the white rats. And that would be what I did. Once you get rid of rats, this is actually part of an interesting bit of economy in the game. You put the rat in the little tallyman rat cage. So this is a special thing that came with the Kickstarter version of the game. You could also just put them on this card. So as you collect rats, let's say that I wanna roll one more. Nope. No luck there. So I would just stop there for the turn, maybe spend some movement on some traps to maybe try to kill those rats. The more rats you collect, uh, the more rats you could potentially trade in for rewards later. So for example, three rats get you an extra die. And as you can see, they disappear fast. Seven rats can get you a purple token, which is a potion that you can use for a special ability that you might've unlocked. 10 will get you some health, 12 will get you a yellow potion, and 18 will actually get you a piece of cheese. So if you're very patient and you catch a lot of rats, then you can cheese it up. If you can clear all the rats off of a spot, then you collect the cheese. If six or more rats swarm on the spot around the cheese, they will get the cheese regardless of your presence. So basically the AI is gonna cause all these rats to move towards different pieces of cheese. You can only cover so much, so you have to figure out what you're gonna to try to take and what you're gonna let them get. As you explore, you're gonna draw more of these township cards and set them up. The other thing that's interesting is that as your town progresses, if you're too far away from a space and it no longer has any items of interest on it, such as cheese, it kind of becomes defunct and then the rats are cleared away from it and they don't keep spawning on old, on old township cards. So the game will actually progress and kind of stay near you, near the center of the action, which I actually think was a good mechanism. So just to sum up, you are a rat catcher trying to get cheese to power up. They are an evil rat trying to get cheese to power up. You're moving through this town, battling rats for cheese, trying to kill them with your abilities and your traps, while also maybe picking up some special items. And as you capture rats, you have this economy where you're able to put rats back into the bag in exchange for power-ups. But when you do that, you're also, of course, changing the composition of this bag. So you might not want to put your black rat back in the bag because they cause more spying. I might want to wait until I have some more white or brown rats in here and put them back in the bag instead. So for a quickie dice game, there's actually quite a bit to think about. And I think that's what makes the Rat Catcher a solo game worth considering. So now for some final thoughts. There's a lot to appreciate about the Rat Catcher, especially because it's clearly a solo passion project and those just make me really happy to see. There's a lot of really good thought that goes into this game. I particularly like some of the choices it asks you to make, such as which upgrades to make in which order, how best to choose where to go in the township and what cheese to go for. And even the sort of economy of what rats to spend in order to get rewards, but also, you know, you have to think about what rats are going to be returning to the sack to be potentially drawn later in the game. So there are a lot of little thinky elements that go into the game that give it some interest and that make multiple aspects of the game interesting and worth considering. The Rat Catcher also has a really great art style. Uh, I did not expect to be so charmed by a world about magical cheese and people out to catch all of the rats, but the art really sold me. And I feel like 
there's like a whole world that this game is evoking that is interesting and dramatic and I'm kind of curious about it. And that's something that not every game can do. So it's just a very creative theme that's very well executed artistically. And I'm really, really happy to see that. That said, there are some aspects of the game that make it clearly sort of an early career project with a few imperfections, in my opinion. Uh, one of those is that the game could have used better editing. There are typos throughout and sometimes formatting issues. So paragraphs not properly separated or, you know, um, the copy for one of the rat catchers, like their little bio is not there. Instead, there's a duplicate of the bio of another rat catcher. And while the rules themselves are actually pretty good and I didn't have any problems learning how to play the game, finding that many typos and that many formatting errors is something that is a minus for me. I also felt that in terms of where investments could have been made in this game, not all the right choices were made. So the township cards get really, really crowded, crowded with rats. Your pieces don't always fit. I actually would have liked to have bigger township cards. And I feel like that would have been possible given that for this game, you know, there was a series of enamel pins that were made. Um, there is a custom neoprene dice tray with the cheese wheel on it. Uh, there was like a little... You know, you saw in the video the little wooden version of the uh, of the cage where you keep all of the rats that you've caught. So the game has all these cool little bells and whistles, and they're great. They really add to the atmosphere of the game. I can absolutely see why you would make those sorts of add-ons, but I would rather see them all disappear and just have bigger cards and better copy editing. And so this is just one of those situations where, in my opinion, the game would have been better if all funding had been priority on the game itself, its playability, instead of, instead of accessories that make it look cooler. The art was already great. The atmosphere was already there. I just want to have enough room on my township carts to fit all the rats. And depending on the play style that you like, the rat catcher may or may not be for you. Most of your successes are decided based on die rolls that you can't modify after the fact, although you can get some rerolls. However, because of the upgrades and the skill trees and the other choices that are embedded into the game, sometimes it feels like you have a little bit more to plan with than you really do because it's still going to come down to a die roll. So if you want to be able to do your best but still be at the mercy of the dice, you're, you're going to have a good time with this one. It's a game that runs well and it's fun. If you despise dice games, this isn't going to change your mind. That said, I really like this game because it is imaginative, it is fun to play, it incorporates fun choices. I like the way that the mechanisms all work together without making things overly complicated. And I would definitely play more games from this designer and more games from this sort of world. So for me, the Rat Catcher is a seven out of 10 and it gets a Dice Tower seal of approval. Happy gaming. Mm -hmm.